Q Music. We're all about class when it comes to pens, and we like to let it show. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio, presented by FBGeeks.com. And now for your fountain pen enthusiast host, here's Eric and Dan. Gentlemen. This is Fountain Pen Geeks podcast, episode number 44 for Tuesday, October 9th, 2012. We're recording live on Sunday, or sorry, on Saturday, October 6th. Uh, welcome to Fountain Pen Television. Uh, this is Dan. And this is Steven. And we are waiting on Eric to arrive any minute, but uh, let's go ahead and introduce our guest. Who is that? Who's the guest? Who is this guy? He keeps bumping into our show. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how he keeps getting in here, but uh, this week we have Mr. Brian Gray with us. Brian, how you doing? Really good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me good. in again. So uh, what have you been up to since the last time we talked to you? When was the last time? Man, you guys haven't had me on the show for like a month, and I'm really thoroughly angry about that. You know, <laughs> I need to get my FP Geeks broadcast fixed at least once a month. So get a regular schedule together, all right, guys? Sorry about that. We'll, we'll try to you know, step it up. <laughs> yeah, we, well, we've been really, really busy lately. I mean, uh, things at the Edison Pen Company have been pretty crazy. We've added some more international accounts, uh, and uh, we do have some new offerings. We've been working on a special pen that a lot of you will, will be excited about, uh, I'm sure. So um, can't spill the beans yet, but hopefully within a month or two, I'll have something really cool. Actually, there's about two or three different things that are happening right now. So not Very to get cool. too Edison promotional, I apologize. That's not the purpose here. But uh, um, when you ask what I'm up to, there's nothing else except pens. So, <laughs> so um, recently you were just at a pen show, right? Yeah, we just did the Michigan Pen Show, which we um, which we had never done before. It, it, the Michigan Pen Show was was kind of notoriously sporadic. You know, it's like they would take a year off and then do it two years and then another year off, and and also it always seemed like I was never sure exactly when it was happening. So I had some cu some customers that emailed me and said, "Hey, the Michigan Pen Show is you know two weeks. You should definitely get involved." And I said, "Well, yeah, it's only two hours away." So we went up. We had a great time. It's a relatively small show, um, but you know, the, nothing wrong with that necessarily. There's still there were still a lot of great vendors, and um, we took my seven-year-old Andrew to his first pen show. It's one of those deals where Andrea and I are always so, so busy at pen shows that we're a little paranoid about bringing our seven-year-old. You know, I mean, will right. he will he behave? Will he interfere with us? Will it be a pain? Will he be run all over and spilling ink? But uh, he did a great job. He was. We're really proud of him. We kind of had a chat with him, like, hey, if we're talking to customers, then here's the rules. And he did a really good job. He made out with eight different pens at that show. <laughs> so it's it was really cool. I have, I have some of his here. A lot of people, you know, I th maybe some people read a little blog post that I put on my website. Um, I really recommend getting your kids, not, not only you, to pen shows, but bring your kids to pen shows as well. Uh, the PCA puts on an, a really phenomenal presentation. Um, for the pens for kids, right? It's, it's called the pens for kids program. And I, I, every year or every pen show that I go to, I hear the announcement of the PCA pens for kids presentation. And you know, it's a great, whatever, that's fine. That's good that they're doing that. But then it really hit home with me when my son, keep in mind that, you know, my son growing up in a house that manufactures pens, uh, I thought he'd be pretty bored by that presentation. Like maybe he already knows a lot of this stuff and he understands how pens work and all this. And he came back and he loved it. He was having a blast. He, he, he was the best thing ever. So, yep, he made out with a bunch of pens, including a nice little Looney Tunes rollerball. <laughs> Awesome. So, yeah, that's his Bugs Bunny pen. But, I mean, obviously that's a bit a bit of a novelty. He did end up with a Coeco Sport, um, a Wherever lever filler, uh, a Hero, I think it's a 616. No, it's a 330, a dollar pen, um, and some other stuff, the, a vintage pencil. So he now understands lever fillers very well, and he had a blast. So, anyways... Um, you know, big promotion to the PCA. I didn't understand it until my own seven-year-old went to that presentation, and uh, big promotion to the Michigan Pen Show too. It was it was a good one. If you if you're not that far away, um, I'd say it's worth the drive. That's cool. Very cool. Um, and actually, going on this weekend is the San Francisco Pen Show, um, and we will have a report uh, hopefully on Monday from Lisa Miyako. Uh, looking forward to that and. Let's see, happening today is the London Writing Equipment Show. Um, 
the, the writing desk will be there. Uh, hopefully we'll have a report from them, um, not on our website, of course, but you know, on theirs. And then uh, coming up in November, uh, that's, w when's the Columbus show, Brian? Uh, November, but the exact date, I want to say it's like maybe the second weekend. I'm going to tell you in just a second. All right, and for those of you not in the States, uh, Madrid is having a pin show November 16th through 18th. You can find out all the details at madridpinshow.com. Columbus show is November 8th through the 11th. All right, very cool, and yep. you guys are definitely going to be there, right? Yep, we'll be there for sure. Awesome. Very cool. And new at the website this week, we finally have a poll question again. Um, the, the question was, after a few months with the new comment system, what do you think of it? So the new comment system is, is by Discuss. It has a lot of um, social network features. It ties into Twitter and, and Facebook, and you can upvote and downvote comments and things like that. And I just kind of want to get a, a feedback from the community of how, how they're liking it, how they're using it. 62% uh, said, it's okay. I comment just as often as I did with the old system. 23% said it's great, I actually comment more, and then we had 15% say I don't like it, I comment less than I did. Um, so I, I, I don't really understand why people are commenting less, I mean, people can still sign in anonymously, um, but you know, maybe we'll add something to the forum and then they can kind of explain their reasoning, but uh, what do you guys think of the Discuss comments? I think it's great. <clears throat> And I, I can see the point that, you know, whenever you change something, there will be people who do not like it and do not like the, the, the change the system brings. But in, in general, I think it, it works very well. It's, it's easy to use. And, yeah, I, I don't really see any bad points about it. Yep, me too. I mean, usually when people get set into something that they're used to, sometimes change uh, is a little distressing. But uh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's a lot easier to use too, easier to log in. Easier to get your comment up. All right. Well, uh, thanks for the feedback, guys. We will um, try to continue to have some new poll questions come up. Um, I'll probably leave this one up for the rest of um, this upcoming week just to get a little more um, votes on it, and then, then we'll have something new after that. But uh, should we move on to the news? Sure. So Stipula and Chatterley Pens have come out with a new Etruria. And this is, I mean, a, a classic pen. I mean, it's, 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 and this one is very different from what they've normally done. They've added a few features that we have never seen in an Etruria, and it's facets, multiple thin cap bands, and cap threads that are on the front of the section. And so this pen is a piston filling fountain pen limited to 18 pieces worldwide. It comes with a 14K gold nib with an available um, stub option for 550. And so at the website we had, um, Eric and I gave our thoughts, but Stephen, what, what do you think of this pen? I think it's, it's very interesting. Uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I always, I'm not sure what to think of, of faceted pens, but in this case I think it, it it works for some reason. I mean, I, I also I, I like the, the the finish. I think that that the green uh, works well, uh, and I, I really like those those threads all the way at the front of the section. I'm 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 not sure how well that works. Or how you know whether that's that well that will secure your your cap as tightly as as threads as the, at the back. I guess, um, but I, I I like it. I like the way this pen looks. And I actually think the, the the price is not unreasonable. I mean, if you if there are eighteen worldwide, then five hundred and fifty. I think that's not a bad deal. That that was kind of my thinking. I mean, it certainly has a different look than the standard Etruria. Um, it's the proportions. I don't know. Something about it just doesn't look um, like like the regular Etruria. If you had told me, you know, all these features without showing me a picture, I, I totally would have been gung-ho for it. But, but once I saw it, it just, I don't know, something about it threw me because I, I love pins with facets. I love the look of the multiple thin cap bands, and, I, and I'm glad that companies are starting to use this kind of look. I know Mont Blanc on the, the Brahms limited edition, they used five thin cap bands, but they put it up right under the clip. Um, at the top of the cap. So it was a little different placement, a little different look. I really like that. And I love the threads on the front of the section because 
it completely removes them from the you know this this transition from the section to the barrel where I, I know Steven and I both kind of hold the pin a little further back so that you know completely removes that issue there um, 18 pins worldwide 550 I don't think that's too unreasonable for such a limited edition pin and um, Bryant at Chatterley pins you know he's known for doing a lot of this this custom stuff with, with very limited edition runs so yeah, Brian definitely has a reputation for getting some unique stuff out there. I like this a lot. I think this is really cool. Uh, one thing, I don't know if you guys noticed this or not. Did you notice that the, you know, you've got six very thin center bands on there. Did you notice that those are also faceted? Yeah. Look, look in the second picture. The center bands are also faceted. That would not be easy to do. That's, to me, that's really cool. Um, I have seen a lot of pen companies that will put... Um, threads on the front of the section, but one thing that I noticed about this is you notice that the, um, without getting too far into uh, engineering here or, or thread theory, notice that the major diameter of the thread is actually smaller than the lip uh, where the flare comes out. So in other words, what that tells me is for people that hold the pen close to the section, you're not going to feel those threads because they're actually a smaller diameter than the the widest part of the section on the end. So that I think is important because I've seen a couple of uh, pens where you have threads on the end of the section and it looks to me like man my fingers just wouldn't like that because they're either too long or they don't have a good transition from section to thread and so you know your fingers will be involved in that some way or another. Um, but yeah I, I think it's a great material too. I like the material I assume it's probably some type of a cellulose, or maybe it's an acrylic, I'm not sure. I think it's a celluloid, um, but I don't have yeah. the exact details right now. Yeah. The other thing that I can't tell is, is the blind cap also faceted uh, for the piston mechanism? You know, the, the one thing that I'm, I'm, I'm just curious about that. It's not a good or bad thing, but would you need to align the facets on the back of the blind cap when you, you know, are, are using the filling mechanism? Not a big deal. It looks to me like maybe it's round and there's a transition that goes over to it. Um, but overall, yeah, I, think this is, I think this is a cool pen. You know, honestly, for, for something that has a nice 14 karat nib, limited to 18, at a price of 550, I'll bet you these are going to go really fast. Yeah, I wouldn't be at all surprised by that either. Yeah, cool pen. Another, you know, uh, uh, I I know Bryant pretty well. Um, he and I have done a couple of deals together on some pens, and um, he always has some great stuff. I, I admire what he's doing. So, how fast do you think these new pens from St. Dupont are going to go? <laughs> St. Dupont. Um, these they're, are they're celebrating their 140th anniversary with the Second Empire collection. And, you know, I mean, as extravagant and expensive and ridiculous as they are, I actually love this style. Um, I, I don't know why. It's just something about that really appeals to me. Um, the, the company started in 1872. I mean, 140 years ago. That's kind of mind-boggling to me. The, the Second Empire style that they're uh, designing these pens from it, it's also known as the Napoleon the third style and it was inspired by great French furniture houses they're making three different styles that are, are very similar to this one shown on the screen and they will range anywhere from thirty four hundred dollars to thirty five thousand dollars for a, a diamond studded one that's that's pretty crazy as well but uh, th does this type of thing appeal to you guys at all I mean this it, style it, it, it actually does not appeal to me at all, but I do appreciate the, the craftsmanship that went into this. I mean, clearly, if you look at the, the, the clip on this pen or at the end of the barrel, I'm not sure whether I care much for it, but you have to admit that they, they put work and, and craftsmanship in that, and that is something I, I can really appreciate. This is not something I would buy, I and mean, even apart from the price, I, if this would be $20, I still wouldn't buy it, but I, I do think it's it's very nice, and you'd you know, buy that, it and then you'd sell it. Come on. <laughs> well, that would be one option. <laughs> um, so, and I mean, if you look at this sort of this this sofa like stand, I, I mean, they they had a lot of eye for detail in this, and that is something I, I really enjoy. The one thing that I was a little thrown off by, because as you guys know, I very rarely actually prepare for these uh, <laughs> these little TV shows and these broadcasts that we do. There we go. Now, okay, I understand now, because on the Google Hangout screen, 
the image was stretched way out at first. And I'm looking at this, and I'm going, that's the thinnest, longest pen I've ever <laughs> seen. That thing just looks awful. And then I went over to the Fountain Pen Geeks page and saw that, okay, this, <laughs> the, the dimensions of this are a bit more reasonable now that I see it's not a stretched image. So, you know, I, you know I, personally, this is not my thing. Um, but I can definitely appreciate how, you know, the work that goes into this, uh, what it would take to make this pen. Um, the one thing that I'm a little unsure of, is this a snap cap or is this a, it's, it's obviously not threaded, so it has to be a snap cap that probably attaches to the lip of the section is my guess. Uh, my connection's a little slow on getting this, these photos up, I apologize. I'm trying to get a view of the section to see if it's a, a snap cap and there's no way to tell. I, um, I, I think it has to be, unless it's like a magnet or some kind of a friction fit. I can't quite see, yeah, um, because on some of the, the pictures where they show this section, it, it looks very decorated, so it, it could be a snap fit where it, it does look, look like there's a lip on the front of the section Yeah. That, it, that the cap could snap to, so that might be how they're doing it. Yeah, well, overall, I definitely appreciate this. Um, it, it looks like for sure you're not going to post the pen. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, but I, I don't think that you'd want to post something that that is on that that very decorative barrel, anyways. You know, I don't know that that would be a good idea to begin with. Um, but yeah, I, this is not my thing, uh, Stephen. I would buy this for twenty five dollars, and I would turn around and sell it to someone for eight hundred. How's that? That sounds like a good deal. Yeah, that <laughs> I could probably do. Yeah. So yeah, personally, it's not my thing, but I think it's I I, I think it's you know to be appreciated. It, it's 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 pretty cool, but I would not buy it. Now, Stephen, you uh, reviewed a new ink this week, correct? Yes, I did. Um, this is uh, Iro Shizuku Momiji, uh, one of the Iro Shizuku inks. Uh, I I I have somewhat dual feelings about this ink for the for the very reason that. Um, the color does not really appeal to me. I expected it. It's it's something like autumn leaves or something. That, that's what what Momiji means, if I understand correctly. Um, I would expect a brighter red, and instead, it's a, a fairly restrained, well, pink, I would say. Um, and that is just not not really my color. On the other hand, it behaves very well. Excellent flow. Little feathering, almost no feathering, I would say very little bleed through so it's it's not a bad ink it's just a color you know a type of color of ink that that does not really appeal to me but you know to each his own obviously so do you have any other inks that might be similar to this color i i thought about that for a while i could say that what comes a little close is something like gerbin rouge opera so that's the that's a, a rouge by gerbin that that is not really like it, but at least that's also the sort of restrained red, and that's a little bit like it. Another ink that is a little bit like it is um, Bouquet d'Anton, by the same uh, uh, by Germain. Um, that's also not really like it, but that also has a sort of restrained pink quality, so I, I guess if you would mix Rouge Opera and Bouquet d'Anton, you may get something like this, but it's I don't have anything else that's even remotely close to this specific uh, ink, no. Okay. Uh, one thing that I want to know, you, you guys know that I'm not an ink expert, and I, I, I never claim to be. The only thing that I have to contribute to this, Stephen, where do you get those huge, like, 10-millimeter nibs, or whatever they measure? Uh, oh, yeah, those nibs. Well, those are actually just, they're a, a, a pilot parallel. So they're, they're this, this is the, the, the nib, um, which is just, they're, they're just two sheets of metal. Uh, is it intended, to like, to be for artists? Yeah, it's it's like it's a calligraphy nib. You can do calligraphy with this. That's uh, cool. And they they come in a bunch of, of sizes, um, and the, the the six millimeter is the biggest. And now when we when we started out uh, doing the encyclopedia, I used another type of, of dip nib, um, which I'm grabbing right now, uh, which is this wide. Now that's a serious nib. Uh, that's wow. that's fifteen millimeters. So that's but really that is, huge. But the, 
that's a dip nib, right? This is a dip nib, and these <laughs> these parallel um, uh, the, the parallel nibs have the uh, the advantage of just you know you you can just th these pens come with a converter. You can actually use actually not this converter, but you, know, you can just use it with a converter. You can put in cartridges, so it's it's easier to use. That's cool. I just had to ask. So that 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 super what 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 did you say? Fifteen millimeter? You said? Yeah, fifteen millimeter. Is, are those made by Browse then? Yes. Okay, because I th I thought I'd seen those before. All right. So okay. even I, I, I gotta ones, I gotta I get think, some. So. Uh, you realize that that would double as a you know calligraphy nib, and if you needed to paint your house, just. It's you know. really useful. It's 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 awesome for that. And you know you can you can scrape things off. You know if you need to peel paint off your walls, you can use it for that too. So it's extremely versatile. Yeah. So Stephen, have you decided what your next entry for Encyclopedia well, is going to be? Um, yes, I guess what I want to do <clears throat> is dye mine ancient copper because a lot of people have requested that. Now I have ordered the bottle along with a pen, and the pen was not in stock, so I just told the, the shop, just wait until you got the, the pen. So I haven't received that yet. What I was actually intending to do is uh, Watermelon Florida Blue, which is a... Very good ink. Blue, yes, exactly. And it's, it's, it's just a blue. It's, it's nothing extremely fancy, but it, it behaves so well that whenever I have, a, let's say, a difficult pen, you know, you're not sure whether whether the flow is entirely correct, etc. I always put in that ink just to to see whether it's actually the pen or it may have been the ink I was using. And it's it's little feathering, you know, good flow properties. Doesn't bleed through a lot, so it's it's. I I think it's it's an, an ink everyone should have, if nothing else. And you can at least test pens with it. So I, I think it's it's still worthwhile to to do an encyclopedia entry in that. Very cool. Florida blue or Serenity blue. Yeah, you never really finger. know, right? You never know. really know. I, I, I just call it uh, TIFCAF, which is the ink formerly known as Florida. Uh, I, there you I, go. I think that's, that's the, that's the simplest awesome. way. Then at least you know. <laughs> you know. Right. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Hang on, hang on. I, I, I all, I was, I, my timing is off, but I'll still throw it in. Did it go? Uh -uh, I didn't hear it. I was trying didn't to do a rim it. shot, sorry. Oh, there, there it is. There it goes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, coming up new from Delta is a new nib called the Fusion Nib. And it will be introduced on a new pen called the Fusion 82 and a few other new ones coming up uh, shortly. Now, in their press material, they say the Fusion Nib consists of a combination of different materials. Some kind of precious metal plate fused to the actual nib made of steel or titanium or something else. It's supposed to make the fountain pen more functional, enhancing the physical chemical properties of the ink with an assembly system adapted to increase the efficiency of the pen itself. Now in two places in the press release they mention increased viscosity and more viscous, referring to the effect the fusion process has on the ink. Now to clarify, viscos viscosity is a measure of internal friction. So water would be less viscous, very runny. Honey would be more viscous, very thick. They talk about increasing the viscosity, making the ink thicker. Um, that I, that just doesn't sound right to me. I don't I don't understand. <laughs> you know, I I don't understand why you would want to do that unless all the inks you use are very thin, which means you're probably using them for a reason. But We'll come back to that. Because fusion features a plate of precious material that due to its high thermal conductivity will tend to heat the underlying metal and in turn transfers heat to the ink, the higher temperature makes the ink floor flow more smoothly. Now, mm. I don't know if, if Delta's created some new magical metal that is creating its own heat, its own energy, but if they have, they need to use it to power things and save this energy crisis that we're <laughs> in. Because as far as I'm aware, nothing just creates its own energy. Um, now, they're right that, that gold does have a very high thermal conductivity, so if, if you place heat to it, it will transfer a lot of it. But you're gonna lose some of that in the efficiency between transferring it to another metal below that. And I don't understand where they think this heat is coming from. It's certainly not coming from your hand because 
it, it's, I mean, you have so much material between the nib and your hand, he, he's just not going to get to it. That's, that's not how it works. Um, they're, they're putting this nib in, um, just a second, let me grab a, a screenshot for you real quick. The pin that they're putting it in is the Fusion 82, and it will be available um, sometime this month for um, it's it's not a ridiculous price. MSRP is two sixty five. Street price is two twelve. We'll be getting four colors in the U.S. Blue, black, brown, and fuchsia. While outside the U.S., there will also be um, green, white, and gray. And th this is a a cartridge converter car cartridge converter filling pen. It'll be available in extra fine to br to broad with a stub nib option. And you know, I I actually don't mind the the pen. I I like the pen. I, heck, I even kind of like the look of the nib, but the press release and the amount of BS that they're shoveling with this <laughs> is you. astounding. I mean, I, 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 I can't understand how their marketing people can write this stuff and sleep soundly at night. I mean... Honestly, I'm I'm glad that you're willing to go to those lengths to give your opinion upon this because if that, if I said that and I'm not saying I agree 100%, I'll give my thoughts on this, but you're on the right track if you ask me. If I say that as a pen manufacturer, then it sounds like I'm just poo-pooing someone's you know new creative idea. To me, this is kind of like the precious resin of 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 the nib world, you know. Um, I, as a pen manufacturer, one of the biggest obstacles that we face is the price of gold. You know, if you want to have gold nibs on pens, uh, gold is crazy right now. You know, it, it, 10, 12, 13 years ago, a gold nib would cost about a quarter to a third of what it does today. So, you know, pen manufacturers out there are looking for alternatives to gold. Visconti using palladium is an example. And granted, you know, I, I don't know whether or not Visconti went with palladium strictly because it's a less expensive metal. Um, it's a good nib, but I want to. I, I just I have to see this thing live and you know and, and write with it. Um, did they ever say what the actual base metal is? Because it it'll be different. Um, on this particular pen, the nib will be a steel nib with an 18 karat precious metal plate on top of it. Um, okay. Is it well, precious you know, steel? It's, 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 <laughs> Yeah, so this is a precious steel nib. You know, I don't want to sound cynical, but you know, it there's no problem with finding alternative materials for nibs that are less expensive. But if you're going to put a steel nib on a pen and put a gold plate on top of it, don't market it with hocus pocus. Just say, "Look, this is a new nib. It's got a cool look to it." And because as far as I can tell, it's it's a steel nib. Am I wrong? Well, no, you're not wrong. That's exactly what it is. And you know, Delta they claim that this has international patents on it, um, mm -hmm. that they've been they've received these patents. It's not patent pending. Um, some of the reasons they've done it is to be, because exactly what you said, gold price is astronomical. Um, yeah. They want to keep some of that you know preciousness in in the pen and in the nib while lowering the price. And I can understand that. I'm I'm all for lowering the price. However, you can do it, but don't come to us and and tell us that your nib heats up the ink. And that it's going to make the flow better, you know, and, and, and make the ex experience magical because it's not. At the end of the day, it still has the same tipping material on it that every other pen company uses. And how that's shaped and smooth, that's going to affect the writing performance. Yeah. And, you know, keep, keep in mind, increasing viscosity of your ink is not really a good thing. You know, no. I mean, what, uh, so it's it's almost like we've got this magic hocus pocus to this ink, and it's going to do something <laughs> that that you know uh, they've got slick marketing, but it's all pointing towards something that we don't like. The other thing that I don't really care for with this is that I think it's a little deceiving when you look at the photo of the nib. You see that it says 18K750. My assumption when I first saw this photo was that this was a gold nib. You know. Obviously, the 18K750 is referring to that little plate that they put on top. Exactly. It's not referring to the nib itself. So, yeah, when, when I saw this and I read through this, I actually did read through this, just so you know, I did prepare a little bit on this one. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it, it, it looks to me, again, I could be wrong, but from what I can tell, uh, until I can, act, maybe I can write with, with one at the Columbus Pen Show, um, it just well, looks like a steel nib that they're trying to 
do some slick marketing. But I am happy that they didn't go crazy with the price. You know, right. if, if they if they did this and put a steel nibbed hocus pocus, you know, a steel hocus pocus nib on a five hundred dollar pen, then then that would be even worse. But you know, and and having said all that, um, we are supposed to be getting one of these to review. Um, and you know what? If it's a good nib, I'll 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 tell you. I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, but but this type of stuff, I mean, it 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 doesn't make sense and. I would hope that our readers, that people out there that are looking at this pen are educated enough that they should be able to see through this. Um, I, I'm kind of disappointed that this is the path Delta took to try and sell more pens rather than just saying, hey, we've come up with a new design that we think looks awesome and it's a little bit different from everything some you know people are doing. Here it is. You know, don't tell them, don't try and make all these extravagant claims. I mean, you know, I, I don't want a, a steel tubular nib that cost me $600. You guys yeah. get that reference? I got it. I did, I did, okay. I did. Just making sure. Um, but, um, you know, after what I've I said. I just hear it, a mosquito here somewhere. Is that <laughs> Nice. You know, I've it thrown a couple. It the last of... pin that we get from Delta, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie to our, our readers. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, not going to do that. So, Brian, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? I was trying to throw in another little drum kick, but uh, <laughs> I think my connection's too slow. Hang on a second. Let me try something else. Yeah, I just keep going. If, if, I, if I interrupt with a, a, like a trombone wah-wah, then uh, it's just because my connection's slow. Is my video keeping up at all? Yeah, I think it looks good. It's, oh, it's, really? Yeah, it's looking all right. <laughs> see, uh, my, my, see, my rim shot is 20 seconds late. Um, Just get ready because a trombone should be coming in here soon. I did it like a <laughs> half hour ago. Oh, no. <laughs> we, we definitely need to move on then. Right, um, just, just, just wait, though, because you're going to get interrupted by a trombone here soon. There, there it is. <laughs> Sorry, uh, guys. <laughs> so, pin a vintage... Um, the, the fourth issue of their online magazine has come out. Um, th th these issues are really good. Um, I'm just fascinated by the quality of the content that goes in there. I mean, it's, it's like their full published paper magazine, but online. Hey, and, Dan. Yeah. Hey, Dan, before we move on, I, I realize I might have dominated a lot of the time on that Delta pen. Steven, did you have any comments on that Delta pen that um, you wanted to get out? I apologize, guys. No, I, no, no. I, I kinda... it, it was fine. I, I actually, I, I was much more interested in, in hearing your opinion as a sort of a pen and nib uh, person than, than my own. I mean, as a maker of the, the stuff. No, no. I, 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 that was great. Yeah. Okay. So no, no thoughts different than ours. No, I mean it. It, it looks fascinating, but that's it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry, sorry, Dan. I just no, I, I wanted right. to know if Stephen had any thoughts on it. Yeah, no, that that's cool because I totally skipped over Stephen. I apologize. For no, that. no, that's that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. I'll I'll jump in when I have something interesting to say. So, um, the the Pena Vintage Online Magazine, as I was saying, because you know it's just nearly as high as quality as their print magazine. They've announced that with this fourth fourth issue, it will be their last free version. Um, they're going to be going to a subscription model after this, but uh, I didn't find anything about uh, how that subscription model is going to work, if they're going to have a, an online only subscription or if it's going to be rolled into the subscription of their print mag. Um, but Stephen, what do you think of, of that kind of turn? I mean, do you think, would you rather have that or would you rather have them do more online advertising to make up for it? Well, actually, I, I think it's an interesting concept to, to see, you know, whether people like the, 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 the magazine in, 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 you know, a format like this uh, and then, then do some type of subscription thing because I, I do think this magazine looks, looks very cool. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't mind subscribing to this. So I, I think it's interesting, interesting model. Uh, Brian, we were just mentioning how Pinna for their online magazine with issue four are going to stop giving these out for free and they're going to turn to a paid subscription mm -hmm. to access these. Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, do you think that that's the, the route 
companies or, or websites should take or should they just throw up some more online advertisements to try and cover this so everyone has access to it this is this is strictly online there's no there's no publication right there's no they, uh, they hard do, copy they do have a paper publication but not for this not for penna vintage their their yeah. paper one is just called penna what's what what does it cost a subscription well it's an italian magazine so i think for us based subscribers it's Pretty expensive. I, I can't say an exact number, but I, I I'm yeah. thinking it's around fifty or sixty dollars for a year because of the international subscription. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, um, you know, I mean, Penna started off as a as a free publication, right? Penna Vintage, the online one, did yeah. yes. It was kind of like like, like like a blog. Yeah, I, I have no problem with that. You know, I mean, from I I wouldn't tell them how to do how to do business, but you know, you need to consider that if you start things, if you start something as a totally free product, and then you later move on to charge, then your your crowd may not like it. Maybe they should have started as you know with a fee, and then realized whether they should raise that or not. I don't know. Um, you know, just from a, from a strictly marketing standpoint, if it's a great magazine, I'll subscribe. If it's not, then I won't. Well, um, I, I think by offering, you know, a few free ones, it, it's given everybody a good taste of the quality that's in it. And yeah. I, I, for one, you know, am actually contemplating subscribing to it just because the production value is so darn good and the content is, is so good. Yeah, um, I've, I've definitely been impressed with what I've seen so far out of them. So, you know, I, I, here's the thing. Their product is such high quality that they probably can't do it for free. You know, I mean, oh, regardless of what they bring in for advertisers or like a blog type thing, you know. Maybe the fountain pen geeks should start uh, having a subscription to get on the website. I think it's a great idea. You know, there's there's lots of ideas floating out there, but we won't get into any of that just yet. <laughs> um, one thing that we will get into, though, is a new concept from Twisby. And I was really excited to see this. I don't know about you guys. It's it, Right now, it's the... They're, they're calling it the economic model. I mean, that, that's what they're actually calling it. The code name is, is PP017. It's a piston filling fountain pen aimed at the $25 to $30 price point. And I think if this pen even just gets released, like if, if it just function, if, if ink flows to the paper, <laughs> th this is going to be a hit. I, I think they're going to dominate the market. Um, this would probably become my number one recommended pen for people. I, I think they're just going to kill it with this thing. It's funny how let's let, let's go from one story. We've got Delta putting out a steel nib that they're touting magical qualities, right? And all the marketing that went behind that. Twisby puts out, from what I can tell, looks like a pretty cool pen. It is a piston filler, right? Yep. Um, and they're going to price it twenty five. And how do they market it? This is the economic model. I love it, you know, seriously, that's, people have always said to me, like, man, you got to market your plastic, and I'm just like, plastic, no, it's not resin, it's, pre you know, and so, I always joke around saying, there's no marketing to my resin, it's just plastic, Yeah. and I kind of admire this, just call it the economic model, and uh, for $25, we're not, we're not doofuses, you know, we can, we can figure out that <laughs> it looks like a pretty cool pen, and Twisby has a great reputation to begin with. I thought the entire brand of Twisby was like the economic brand. Um, so it's, it's, I, I think it's, it's really cool that they, I don't think any of their pens are, are overpriced or anything. And if they can now come up with something that, that is this affordable in their regular quality, then I agree with Dan. I, I think they will, they will dominate the entryway section of the, the fountain pens. I mean, it's, it's, th this How looks great. I'm just curious, how, how are they getting this to such an affordable level when I'm assuming, just by the looks of it, that the piston mechanism is the same as the 540, uh, which, you know, that's, what is that going for now? Like $65, $60, somewhere in that range? Um, um, yeah, the, the 540 is, is around $50, $55. Yeah. One of the goals for this project was to um, reduce the number of parts in the pen. Okay. So they, they've redesigned the cap, the inner cap, the barrel, and the piston knob um, to, to simplify the whole design. And they want to reduce the number of metal parts in it to make it as cheap as possible as well. And 
I think they're they're doing a good job. You know, the, this is just a concept right now. We don't know what color is going to be released. Although I love this translucent white. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, very cool. I mean, think think about this. You know, for the last at least the last decade, maybe fifteen or twenty years. There's always that thread on the fountain pen network, or there's always that, you know, what do you recommend for me to get into it, get into the hobby? And it's always been like a Lamy Safari, a Lamy Vista. I could see this becoming the new, you know, if you're just getting into the hobby. I mean, imagine a Lamy Safari or a Lamy Vista with a piston filler. I mean, totally cool, right? You know what? I, honestly, I've never cared for the Safari that much, and I hope this pen just comes out and crushes it. I'll be I, 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 I do like the Safari. I have about four or five of them, actually. I mean, yeah. I have a couple as well, but I, I never use them. I don't like the design. I don't like the section. Um, I certainly like the the Twisby design much better. And I mean, with a piston filler, I mean, yeah, you've and sold it, me. It looks like the cap is faceted, but the barrel is not, right? Like the the cap Correct. and the blind cap is faceted, the barrel is not. I see a pretty big transition from barrel to barrel threads to section, but at the same time, the section looks like it's long enough. That nobody's fingers are going to be, you know, bumping into that stop right there, well, unless the you section, hold the pen really high. The section actually looks exactly like the one on the Vac 700. Hmm, and yeah. go going from the dimensions, it's slightly shorter to in total length than the Vac 700. It's the same length as a 540, but a little bit bigger in diameter. So it it'll it'll be a, a good size pen, I think. Yeah. Um, and I, I really can't wait till this comes out. I'm, we have no release date. You know, who, who knows? Um, I would expect sometime midsummer. Um, you know, I, I, that would give them what eight, eight months, something around there. I think would be maybe six months would be a good time frame. I mean, they've they've come out with four pins. I mean, the five thirty, five forty, the Vax seven hundred. Um, they're, they're mini, mini. It. Yes. The, Since Eric is not here, on, someone has to talk about the mini. <laughs> they're working on the Twisby Mini. I mean, they're all fairly similar pins that I, I think they would have learned a little bit from the production process on how to streamline that, how to make it a little bit more efficient to try and, you know, reduce that 12-month lead time of concept to production. Um, but, you know, of course, we have no idea when this is going to come out, but I, I know, you know, next week would, would not be soon enough, so... Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, when Twisby first came out with the 540, their first offering, I thought, man, that's that's great. I mean, you could, I mean, this is, it's a nice affordable piston filler, but I, I also thought maybe they were just like a flash in the pan type company, like they're going to bring this one thing out, and who knows if it'll do well or not, and whether or not we'll, we'll follow up and keep going. I really think Twisby has come on the market you know, phenomenal. I mean, they, they introduced the, the great pen. They followed it up with a vac filler, which is phenomenal. You know, I just, I really admire Twisby. They've done some great things. Yeah. What I also like about them is that they, you can just take their pens apart and, and maintain them yourself. I mean, a lot of and, pens. And, and they and encourage it that, too. You know, they, they give you the yeah, wrench. They so, give you the directions. They give right. you some grease. I exactly. think that's cool too. A, a lot of pen companies don't want you tinkering with their pens, you know. Uh, and right. I think I think I that's think a good that's idea. Awesome. Yeah. So, were you guys able to check out this week's daily carry? I was. Yes. Uh, what did you guys think of that? Looking awesome. good. Um, this week we featured uh, the daily carry of Aziza Asgarali from Gourmet Pens, and she runs a fantastic blog. She covers all kinds of stuff on her blog: um, pencils, um, all kinds of pens, papers, and cats. There's so much cat stuff there it's incredible but uh i uh I, I can't remember exactly how i i came to know about her blog um but as soon as i found it it, it went on my reading list it's um it's fun it, it's lighthearted. i i suggest everyone you know put it in their rss feed or, or bookmark it or whatever but uh, she showed off a lot of great pens um just kind of starting from the top down here there's the Pilot vanishing point and the the rotten um, material. There's the Lamy Studio, a Faber Castell, Anello Titanium. She's got a couple of Twisby 540s there. The the Pelican M1005 Demonstrator. Wow! And then she goes into a very nice uh, vintage collection that uh, has a couple Watermans. There's 
a waterman that I labeled as the 42, which is actually a 12. And there's a waterman English version and black and copper celluloid. There's a waterman 52 red ripple. And there's also a wall ever sharp second generation dork. And a lot of those have full flex nibs that I can only imagine are just astounding. Yeah, she has a really cool setup here. I, li I like her her little daily carry. I don't know that she carries every one of these pens with her every day. I'm just just kidding. But uh, <laughs> yeah, she's got a really she's got a really good setup here. There was this one waterman which had which was like I think triple broad and wet noodle. That that sounded like well, a dream it, come true, right? It flexed from a fine to a triple broad wet noodle. Wow, uh, that's so, very impressive. Cool. And um, just in case anyone was wondering, the deal with the, the pink text, that's kind of her signature color at gourmetpens.com. So I was just kind of right. tying that in there a little oh, bit. Oh, I liked it. Anybody was wondering. So um, what was, um, I'll, I'll confess, yeah. what was the mislabeled pen? Yeah, I didn't spot it. It, it was the Waterman 42 red modeled. Oh, 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 you already right. said that, didn't you? I'm yeah, sorry. Right. Yeah, okay. it's, it's actually a Waterman 12. The, and, and you really have to know the, the water, Waterman numbering system to figure this out. The, the 12, the first digit in that, the 1 denotes a slip cap, and the 4 is actually for safeties. <laughs> so if, if you knew the number system, it would have been obvious because that's obviously not a safety, but uh, yeah. I thought it was you know very, very... Um, well hidden, I guess. Did anybody get it in the comments? Oh yeah, there was there were several people that. Oh, missed. cool. All right. But uh, and Stephen, I was uh perusing your channel this week, yes. and you put up a a video that got quite a few reactions, um, a good number of views, and it was our expensive pens worth it, and I, yeah. I really liked it. I really liked the discussion. Um. <laughs> Why don't you tell us just a little bit about it? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. I, I wasn't sure how people would respond to this, but the, the reason I, I, I did this video was that one of, well, I guess probably the most recurring question I, I get from people on my channel you know, via YouTube uh, is they always ask me, is this pen worth it? It doesn't really matter which pen it is. Usually it's a pen, let's say it's made out of precious resin um, and with a little white star on top. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, they just wonder whether, whether it's worth it, you know, the, the, the full price, etc. So I thought, well, what actually makes a pen worth something, right? Clearly you've got a, a gold on the nib and you, maybe if, if you buy a pen with diamonds on it, clearly it's going to cost you a lot. But what, what's actually... What is the, the value of a pen? What is it what's it actually worth? So I, I, I just started to try and organize my thoughts as far as I can and then just rambled a bit. And actually, before I, I, I did the video, I, I uh, took my, my favorite book on, on fountain pens, uh, which is called Fountain Pens, aptly named, uh, by, by Peter Twidel. And, and he has a, a picture of a Rockwell plate in his book, made by, by Parker, at least, you know, commissioned by Parker, and they, they gave it to their, their employees at some point when they existed, given a number of years. And he says, so this is an exercise in evaluation. How much is this worth? And he also gives the answer, and he says, well, it's, its intrinsic value is nothing. It's, it's worth what you are willing to pay for it as a collector. And I thought, that's actually, you know, that's an interesting statement, right? I mean, you you... I guess if a pen, if you think that, a, uh, let's say a Mont Blanc 149 is, is worth the, the street price, which around here is 620 euros, and you buy that, then for you, that pen is worth it. And as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's all there's to it. And I was, uh, some people actually, a couple of people actually said, well, you know, I'm happy you made this video because now I don't feel guilty because I really think that this pen was worth that amount of money and, and, and you know, now I sort of get the confirmation that that is not a, a, a strange thought. So, um, yeah, it, it, it drew a lot of views and, and I, uh, yeah, I'm glad it worked out. That was, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I see those questions all the time and um, it was nice to see someone address it. Um, one thing I've, I've have seen 
in, in a related um, fashion is people ask how how much writing quality do you get like like wh where's the limit I guess because right. I, I want to buy the, the best writing quality I pen I can but, but where does that top out I mean does that you know nine hundred dollar Mont Blanc here in the US does it write you know that much better than the twenty dollar Lamy Safari or the one hundred and fifty dollar Lamy two thousand. Um, well, that that's where honestly I think that what we need to get into is and and I think you'll see more and more of this is tutorials on how people can start learning how to adjust your own nibs because the truth is, I mean, what's the difference between um, the eighteen carat nib that's on I don't know let's say well l l okay um great example you know like uh. Uh, the Conklin Nozaks from about three, four years ago. You could get a gold nibbed pen on those, you know, like a 14k nib on those for like 150. You know, I mean that was kind of towards, uh, well, maybe not 150, but I think they were easily less than 200 dollars. Okay, what's the difference between the nib that's on that pen and the nib that's on an 8,000 dollar David Oscarson? Uh, the truth is. Uh, Probably nothing, you know. I mean, uh, David Oscarson uses ebonite feeds. Maybe there's a difference there, but I guarantee that you know a hundred and fifty dollar Conklin Nozak writing on its best day, you're going to be much happier than a David Oscarson nib whose tines are misaligned. You know what I mean? Right. So I mean, I could even take this argument to be so so skewed as to say, you know, a uh, hundred thousand dollar Jade Loymanche, the nib on that. Uh, how how could you tell the difference between that and the same Conklin Nozak or the same Conklin pen? And you know that's where people really need to figure out how to align tines because you can take a Lamy Safari and make it bright beautifully. Absolutely. You know you really can. Um, my my daily user right now is this Encore with a 1.5 millimeter. Uh, uh, nib and this nib cost no more than like ten dollars you know it's just it's one that I had laying around there's no iridium on it um, it's just a steel calligraphy nib and that's my favorite pen right now so I mean what really goes into that and I think what really does go into that and making the pen worth it to you is you know find a shape that speaks to you and if the nib isn't performing exactly the way that you like then put some effort into learning how to fix it yourself or you know, get it off to a nibmeister. Obviously, there's some there's some things that are very very complex. And you're not going to be able to fix them yourself. But I'm willing to think that 90% of bad nibs are simply tine alignment and smoothing, and that's something that's really easy for, for people to do at home. Um, I, I I know there have been plans to do nib tuning videos, and I know that there are some on the way. So there are some that are already out there. Stephen, you did a good one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm not sure whether it's a good one, but I, I did do one, yes. Yeah. So I'll tell you I, it's a good one. Yeah, don't worry okay, about it. Great. And Dan, did you do one or did you work on one or did you publish it or not? I don't know what you're talking about, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another. Well, I, I, think, I think I have a line on two of them that, that might be on the way then. So anyways, for, I, I think that what this boils down to is um, what are you willing to pay? Does the shape and does the... Does the way it feel? Does the way it feel in your hand appeal to you? And then from then on out, it's nibs. And with a few exceptions, like awful Indian or awful Chinese or awful Taiwanese nibs, any well-made nib can be made to write the way that you want it to. And a lot of people should put a little more effort, I feel, into learning how to align tines. And of course, like I said, there's some cases where you can't fix it on your own, and you got to get, you know, Masuyama, Bender, Matashaw, Minuskin, one of those guys, um, or one of the others. I'm sorry if I'm leaving some people out to help you out, but uh, the perfect pen is not necessarily defined by by money, of course. Right, and you know this yeah, relates true. to. Uh... Kind of a question that we got in email from Adam. He says, I love to write with fountain pens, and at the moment, I'm using a Waterman Expert, but I find it very scratchy and rough. He goes, what is the smoothest fountain pen you would recommend for fast, continuous writing? That would cost about 100 pounds. He goes, I, I prefer vintage pens, as I believe they're smooth in general. He goes, I've been looking at the Pelican 400NN and the Parker 51. If 
um, it, it would be great if you could let me know what you think of these pins and if you have any other suggestions. And I, I wrote back to him. I said, hey, you know, I wouldn't. I go, these, both these pins are very good, um, but I wouldn't just buy a new pen to get a smooth nib. I go, yeah. If now, if you like those pens, if those pens feel good in your hand, if if there, if you just really like them and want them, okay, that's good. But if you like that Waterman Expert, send it to a nibmeister, um, yeah. get it tuned, get it smooth, and when it comes back, you're gonna love that pen. It's gonna be your favorite pen. Um, and and he wrote back. He said he actually went with a Parker Fifty One. Um, he said it's buttery smooth. He absolutely loves it, and he's going to uh, take that into consideration about his Waterman Expert because he does like that pen as well. But he also wanted to know of any Nibmeisters in the UK, and unfortunately, I don't know of any off the top of my head. Do you guys? John Soralka. How do you, do you know how to spell his last name? Give me one second here. All right. Um, because... Um, you yeah, know, think... uh, John Soralka, S O R O W K A, Soralka. And actually, if you want, um, no, I don't know. I was going to say maybe I'd put his email up, but maybe I shouldn't do that. Um, I, he's on the forums as, oh, shoot, what's his name on the forums? And, oh, well, if anybody, see, I don't know if I should take the liberty of just giving out his email. Uh, well, maybe... um, I'll tell you what. We will uh, you give that to me off the air, and I'll send it to him personally. Absolutely. So that he has it. But, yeah, um, yeah the, the, I think that's a, a very economical option. I mean, if you already have a pin that you like, take the time, take the money to send it off and have it tuned because th they're going to make it exactly how you want it, and, it, and it's just going to make that pin um, – one of your favorites. Um, yeah, here's a great example. At the PCA, my son, remember I told you he got like eight different pens. My son got a dollar pen. Are you guys familiar with these? They're little cheap things. I mean, they got it for free, right? Okay. But it, it, it's a piston filler with an ink window. Nice. All right. Now it's it, it doesn't have an like an integral blind cap. You take the blind cap off, and then here's the piston mechanism, right? It's got a cheap little Iridium Point Germany nib on it. But I'll tell you what, I don't think that this thing costs more than 5 or $10. And this nib writes wonderfully. It really does. Out of the box, it wrote great. I had a little bit of issue, and I realigned the times, and I smoothed it a little bit. But, you know, this is a great example. $10, uh, uh, I, I think $10. It's actually called a dollar pen, probably because it only costs a dollar. Maybe that's what it is. But it's got an ink window. It's got a piston inside. It's a really cool pen. You know, it's just basically like a school pen for kids. But this pen could be tuned, this nib could be tuned to write as well as just about any, anything out there. Now, of course, there's a difference in gold when it comes to flex and all that. Um, I'm not going to say that this is going to write just as good as a, you know, an 18 karat nib. De good depends on how you define good. But if what you want is smooth and a nice writing pen, you can get it from a real cheapie. Um, now, Stephen, you have some experience with uh, the Pelican 400, right? Yes. Um, I, I think, and I, I know that at least I think Eric feels the same about it because we, we both bought ours in DC. We both have the feeling that um, there is a, a bit of feedback to it, to the nib when you write with it. And this is 14 karat. And we, we took it to, to Mike Maziyama and he said, I can fix it, but this is a part of Pelican nibs. Uh, hmm. from from this era, uh, I guess. So he said, you know, I, of course I, I can make it smoother, but actually it's supposed to be like that. And uh, I think Eric had a, a got a, a fine and I got an extra fine. They both uh, have that. So if, if I mean, Adam, if, if you're looking for a really smooth nib, uh, then you should realize that this, this 400 NN nib can give you a little bit of feedback. Uh, so that's maybe not what you're looking for. I don't, I'm not saying it's an unpleasant feedback, but it's it's not going to be like, like writing on glass when you use this. All but right. how do you guys feel about this? Because usually, you know, when I when I'm tuning nibs and sending them out to clients, I usually go for like seven out of ten ink flow and smooth, but just a touch of feedback. Personally, I don't like glassy smooth. If it's glassy smooth that I can't even feel the paper, then my handwriting gets sloppy. Do you guys agree that some feedback is, in my opinion, not necessary, but desired by me? I want to feel the paper. Yeah, I, I think there is such a thing as too smooth, and mm -hmm. I don't prefer that feeling. I 
like you, I want to be able to feel the texture of the paper mm -hmm. any rougher than that, and I, and I don't care for it. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that's that's a, a good thing. Um, as to wetness, I have to say I, I kind of prefer fairly wet pens, um, but but of course it's 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 easy for a pen to be excessively wet, and that's and, and not, clearly not something you, you would like. But I, I prefer to be a bit on the the, the, the wetter side than on the, the dry side. So seven gotcha. out of ten, I think you said. I think that's a, that would be perfect. Yeah. So um, have you guys got anything new this week? Brian, have you, have you got any new pens besides your son's? I was going to say, it's just really, it's just <laughs> my son's pens right now. Um, no, I, um, outside of, you know, out, outside of Edison, I'm not here to promote Edison. Um, no, not, nothing new in my personal collection outside of what my son brought home with an amazing haul. So that dollar pen, is that actually made of precious resin, I was wondering? That is just plain old uh, friggin' plastic. How's that? <laughs> right. So, Stephen, how about you? You get anything new? Um, well, I, I I got a pen more or less, uh, but I'm I'm waiting for it. I paid for it and it was it was shipped, but I didn't get it yet. So I think I'll just save that for next week. Um, what I did get were some new inks, and when I show you the bottle, that should give mm. you an idea of what type of inks. Uh, wow. I got some new new Akamon uh, ink and. Yeah, well, new, I mean, it's not newly launched, it's just new for me. Um, I got uh, Margaret's House Magenta. Margaret's House is a, a city palace in The Hague, which is now a museum. Uh, I think the magenta is, is pretty nice. It's, it's a magenta, so it's a bit pinkish, but it has pretty nice shading. Um, I got the um, uh, Treve Turquoise. Treve is the name of the uh, sort of boardroom or meeting room where our, our council of ministers has their meetings. Uh, this is a, a, a turquoise, so it's. I think this is very comparable to, say, Pelican turquoise or Edelstein turquoise, something like that. Well shaded, uh, definitely turquoise. And then finally, I got. Uh, Simplicity's Violet. Uh, this is a bit of a joke. There were two uh, Dutch comedians. I think they started at the end of the 50s and they were on television until the 90s, so clearly they did very well. Uh, and they sort of, when they started, they had this sort of fake broadcasting political thing going on called Simplicity's for Bond, uh, which is like the, the, the simplistic union. It's sort of a comedy thing, and they. Um, uh, the Ackermann named an ink after them because these two guys are from The Hague and all of their, their ink names have something to do with The Hague. This is a very dark purple. I think it's very nice, very well shaded. Uh, so far, all of these Ackermann inks have pretty good shading uh, for as far as what I've seen. Um, so that's cool. Just a lot of ink because this is 150 milliliters a bottle, right? So I can uh, <laughs> do a lot of writing. Let me see that bottle again if you don't mind. Yes, of course. How does the ink transfer from the bottom up to the top? Oh, this is brilliant. Yeah. Uh, so this is one that's a little... Did we already cover empty. this? Uh, so right. there's a glass marble in there. You uh -huh. turn it around, you turn it back up, and then the ink is trapped in the neck of the bottle. You stick your pen in and you just fill it up. And, you know, there's no now hassle. See, why didn't I think of that? That is <laughs> yeah, really it's, cool. It's, I recently, someone at the Tilburg Pen Show, that I, I, I said, well, he, he got a couple of these bottles, and I said, that, that's pretty revolutionary, right? And he said, yeah, but actually there's now some word that these have actually been used in the past, and, and you know, Ackermann, when they, they had this type of, um, they, they existed for a number of years, and they brought out the inks, and so now there's some discussion on whether they actually invented it. I have to tell you, I, I couldn't really care less. It's nice that they brought it back. And these are very, very useful bottles. They're fantastic to use. I mean, just putting this on your desk, I mean, it just looks cool. So, so I, I assume you know, it's, it's a glass marble in there, right? It's a glass bottle with a glass marble. Yes. So it probably doesn't have a perfect seal on the ink, but that doesn't matter because it'll eventually go down before you fill the pen anyways, right? Or yeah, after I mean, you fill the pen. It'll, it'll stay in for a long, long time. I mean, okay. days. Yeah, and then, yeah, you know, right. when you want to get rid of it, you can just make it, you know, go... Uh, flow back in there, which is a little yeah. difficult. That's why I grabbed this bottle, this one I've had for a while. With, with the newer ones, of course, there's more ink in there, so it's, it's more difficult to do that. But, you well, know, you'll have to send me a link to those. I think just the, sure. uh, So are they selling the bottles and the ink, or is that just a company that's selling bottles? No, it's Ackermann is a, a fountain pen store. Uh, there is one in Amsterdam, one in The Hague. Only the The Hague branch sells the ink. Yeah. So um, that pen I send you, that's from Ackermann in Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. They only yeah. sell the pens, and then these guys in The Hague only sell the inks. But I'll send you a link, and they do ship 
uh, they don't sell the bottles empty. I've asked for a number of people, and they really say no, we don't. You know, they don't do wholesale, so don't even think about that because I've asked <laughs> that for a number of people, and they all said no, 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 no. These are our inks, uh, so they they don't do that. But I can I can send you a link. You can order stuff. They have decent shipping to you know outside of the EU, so that that should be. Well, tell them honestly if you uh, if they just wanted to start selling the bottles, I think the entire fountain pen world would be interested in those. That's really cool because you know you always run into that. That that debacle, you know, how do you how do you get the last little bit of ink out of a I know, little I, bottle? I, you know, I'll, I'll, I got the strong feeling that they know exactly what they have in hand here. So yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They really want yeah. to keep that to themselves, but that, that's that's cool. the issue. But I mean, they're very friendly, but they just don't. They're not interested in selling this in any other way than through their own store. But, you know, still cool. So, um, I I got a couple items this week. I was able to get my hands on. 400 sheets of Tomo River paper, and I don't know. Are you guys familiar with this paper at all? No. Tell me about it. It's a, a very, very thin paper. Um, it, it reminds me of a lot of the paper used in Bibles. I mean, it's like huh. almost that thin. It only comes from Japan, and like the, the quantity, I can't remember the exact minimum quantity. I think it's somewhere like 4,000 sheets or something, but the shipping to get it exported there is, I mean, astronomical. It's it's easily more than the cost of the paper itself. I was <laughs> lucky enough to be able to buy some from a group buy, and it, it came out to, I think, 11 or $12 per 100 sheets. That's so, not that bad. Yeah, and then so with shipping, I think it was like around 50 bucks for, for 400 sheets, which, I mean, is expensive for paper, but this stuff is is just like... It's it's my new favorite. The, the That's cool. thinness is unbelievable. You know, I mean, it's it is a little delicate. It, it'll fold easier. It, it'll wrinkle easier than others. But the quality of it is is phenomenal. I mean, it's not it, bleeding since it's, since it's that no. thin. Yeah, it, it doesn't bleed. It doesn't feather. Um, it's it's smooth. I mean, it's has has. It's not like glass smooth. It has a nice texture to it, but. It, it's not like real fibrousy or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm looking into ways to get it bound. So I have like kind of like a little notebook for it. But uh, it, it's very cool. If you're interested in it at all, I highly suggest you uh, watch FPN for, for group buy threads because this one went so well, I can't imagine more of them not popping up. That's cool. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really an affordable way to, to get your hands on this paper. And then we had um, Stephen do a video for us of the topic, uh, what do you miss at FP Geeks? And I'm going to go ahead and play the video for it. If you've already watched it or, or seen it, um, feel free to, to skip ahead um, three minutes. But I'm just going to play it for you in full right now. Um, just bear with me one second while I start it. We need to talk about FP Geeks. Uh, you know, I'm a part of that now, uh, and I have to ask you a question. Is there anything you would like to see on FP Geeks? We are reaching out here and asking for your help. FP Geeks is not something we uphold and maintain for ourselves. FP Geeks is a website that we think and we, we hope it's entertaining, it's useful, it's informative. But maybe there are things we can do better, things we can do differently. Maybe there are features you are missing. We have awesome reviews, we have a forum, we have Fountain Television, um, uh, we have Encyclopedia, we have Geeks of the Week. Um, there are other features you know, stuff that, that's there. But what do you need? What would you like to see? We are listening. So just tell us what you would like to see. Would you like to see more awesome reviews? More Geeks of the Week? Shorter Fountain Pen Television? Longer Fountain Pen Television? Um, we intend to take whatever you say into consideration. We can't promise we'll do everything, but if people come up with something and more people confirm that and say it's a good idea, we will definitely consider doing it. So just consider this to be you know, our way of reaching out to you and, and asking for your help. Um, 
we have opened a forum thread on fpgeeks.com. I have disabled comments for this video, and the reason is not that I don't want you to, to comment, but I don't want you to put your comments at the video. I want to have that in one central place so that we can all, Eric, Dan, and I can just you know read them, other people can read them, and we can answer in a way that's centralized. That, that's all there's to it. Um, so help us out. Give it some thought. You don't have to respond straight away. You don't have to respond at all if you don't want to. But if you have ideas, let us know. Go to the forum. Give us your ideas. Keep it constructive. Uh, uh, please put your thoughts in a way that we, we can use them. Um, I'm sure you can. I hope this is going to be useful. I hope we'll be able to you know, expand the site based on your, your thoughts and suggestions. And we'll just see what happens. So give us your thoughts. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye bye. I think I want a hat like that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's um, what we're going for. That's that's the information we're looking for. We have a thread in the forum where people can leave their feedback. It's got a lot of good traffic so far. A lot of people have left very good responses, very in depth and detailed responses. Um, we'll probably leave it up. Um, for a few more weeks. Well, I mean, we'll leave it up forever. People can comment for as long as they like, but uh, probably in two or three weeks, we'll we'll run through all the comments. Um, you know, kind of see what people are saying, where where the direction is heading, and uh, and then we'll we'll let everyone know um, how we're going to change things and how you know how we're going to address these issues because we, we don't want to waste time on information or content that you're not interested in. We, we want to put, because we have a limited amount of time, you know, I mean, we, we all have full-time jobs and do other things, so we want to use our time wisely and, and give you the content and information that you're looking for. So that's kind of the, just what we're um, trying to do here. Yeah, I do have a comment, Dan, and I think I think I know that you, I've, I've kind of said this to you privately as well. You guys do welcome guest bloggers, right? If somebody wants to write an article and publish it on your website, you have no problem with someone submitting that to you, at least for consideration, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because that's and we featured I mean, a, a few of those b before, so. Yeah, I mean, I've seen them in the past, but I think that, you know, I, I think it's important for people to realize that, you know, well, uh, uh, Dan, Eric, and uh, Stephen all have jobs, you know, or, or they all have you know full time schedules. So Fountain Pen Geeks is really just a, a labor of love, and one thing that I think everybody, at least maybe, you should make sure that people are aware is that you do welcome guest bloggers because I know that between the three of you, my gosh, you guys put out sometimes four, you know, good blog posts a day. And, you know, if you want to share that workload, just make sure that people are aware that you do accept, you know, guest blogging. And if you'd like to submit something for consideration, then just send it off because it's kind of nice to have everything in one centralized location. I mean, personally, I think that FP Geeks is probably, if you had to pick one website or one blog to go to to get everything fountain pen related, um, it's definitely the one. So um, if you guys can have some of your burden eased up by allowing people to guest blog, I think it's a great idea. So as long as people are aware, if you've got a great idea, you got a great article, you've got something that you'd love to put out to the Fountain Pen community, feel free to send it off and it'll get a huge audience at the Fountain Pen Geeks. Thank you. Yeah. Steven, anything that you'd like to add to, to no, that? No, I, I think you, you, you just covered it all. I, I think people are already... Um, uh, you know, adding very useful stuff, and um, you know, I, I think so far the, the vast majority of people have been very constructive and, and been very useful in really contributing stuff. It's also great. I mean, not just is it nice to hear that we're doing stuff well, but please also let us know if we're doing things well, right? I mean, we don't want to throw out certain features because we nobody mentions them. We think you know people may not like them. If you do like stuff. Do feel free to mention that. Um, I think this is going to be very valuable, and I, I agree with Dan. We should just, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, end of the month or something, uh, just uh, have a look at, at stuff. I mean, I'm reading the, the, the form now. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it. Uh, great stuff is coming up. We will, you know, continue to do that, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how we can implement stuff uh, that, that's being mentioned. Dan already, it already gave me some ideas and stuff we can do, so I, I, I think it's, it's very valuable. So please keep posting there, and uh, 
we'll see what we can do about it. All right, so that's the show, everyone. Um, I oh, think it, wait I, just a second. Exactly. We got some pens to give away. Um, so uh, last month we said that we were going to give away a Twisby Mini and possibly up to four if we got a thousand entries or more. Uh, if we got five hundred or more, we were going to give away two. And the Twisby Mini is not out yet. Um, we still don't know when exactly. But you also have the option of. <laughs> Sorry, I just. Uh, that's all I right. figured I got to do some sound effects before the end of the show. Um, if if you don't want to wait for the Twisby <laughs> Mini, you do have other options that you can pick from from Twisby if you want to get your pen right now. So, um, we didn't get 500 entries. We we got just over 400. Uh, so we're only going to be giving away one pen. Um, sorry about that, everyone, but you should have told your friends to enter. <laughs> so, Stephen, I need you to find a website that you can find yes. a random number mm -hmm. from 1 to 411. And remind me, what pen is this? This is the Twisby Mini. But it's not out yet. Correct. Okay. So people will just send them an IOU uh, slip and then they can uh, hand it in or something. That'll work. Uh, I so, have a number. You hang have on, a number? Wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You ready? Wait, 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 Brian. Wait until he gives us a number. Okay. What's the number? 261! I'm loving the sound effects. We should <laughs> Thank you. Often. Just, just <laughs> for the sounds, it's awesome. I just got to try a few more here. Hang on. Not bad, huh? Not bad? That's not bad at all. And if you want to get really, really dramatic, you can be like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You said 261, right? I said 261 indeed. Okay. So, here is the envelope for the winner. It is... An, an entry from Mexico. Esteban Vega is our winner. Um, ooh, he even sent in sent in a nice letter. Um, did he, I hope I hope he left a uh, email or some way to contact us. But uh, Esteban, if you're watching this or if you hear this, um, you're the winner. Congratulations. We will be trying to contact you for for your pen. You can choose. Either the Twisby Mini or anything else in Twisby's lineup that you would like. Um, so congratulations to you, man. Um, there is no month-long giveaway for the month of October. We are taking a little hiatus there. Uh, we will come back in November, hopefully, maybe. I'm not going to guarantee anything, but we'll see. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you for to everyone who wrote in. We got um, so many awesome letters, emails. Um, it was just, it, it's so much fun reading them. Really appreciate it, you guys. So thank you, everyone, for entering. Yeah, it's great. Thanks. Very nice of you guys to do that, too. Another reason why FP Geeks is the best blog out there. I mean, come on. Whichever, whatever one gives away, what other blog gives away pens on a regular basis? One thing I do want to show off is an entry that uh, we received, and it was, it was a little bit of artwork. I thought it was just absolutely fantastic. And are you guys ready for this? Hang on a second. Oh no, it's gonna be reversed. No, it's 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 the right way. Is it? I mean the image reversed? I'm seeing it correct. Yeah, I'm seeing it too. Okay, yeah, good. Great. But yeah, this was really cool. Um I, I'm yes. not sure exactly how they did it. I, I think they might have used a like a, a paintbrush and dipped it in water to kind of smear the ink around. That's but, cool. Yeah, it is really cool. We got a lot of really neat artwork. This is just one of them. I've been posting pictures of a lot of this stuff at our uh, Facebook page in the albums, and th and that's public. You guys don't have to be a member of Facebook to view that. I'm gonna look into another method of posting images. Probably, I'll probably start a Flickr account for FP Geeks, and then we can just host that right at the website. But um, yeah, we got a lot of good artwork, a lot of cool envelopes, a lot of cool stamps on there, and I I, I want to show all that stuff off. But uh, thank thank you everyone for um, joining us this week. 
Uh, you can contact us via hey, wait, wait, but before we wrap up, though, I think we got to figure out, did we ever figure out whether or not Eric was, like, kidnapped by a Mexican cartel, or no, he, are we going to receive body parts? Do we know where Eric is? I don't know, but I hope I get all his pens. <laughs> <laughs> he sent me a text message. Uh, uh, he, he said... Uh, uh, well, I don't know what he... Oh, he's got a new number now. I don't know. Uh, as you can see, Starbucks isn't the solution. So... <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, it's... I think it said, send three million in cash unmarked <laughs> bills to this address and you might see your FP geek. We might return him, you know? Well, I think it, it was nice a ransom you. text. I don't know. Uh, they, they, they specifically asked for a large number of pens made of precious resin. Oh, Apparently, geez. they wanted that. So, all right. <laughs> Sorry. See. And on that note, we shall end this. The podcast. All of my sound effects are way too late. This is just horrible. <laughs> I, I click it, and then wait a second. Wait a second. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, jeez. All right, Way I'm too just late. gonna mute you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. If you guys have uh, questions or uh, suggestions for us, please uh, email us at podcast at fpgeeks.com. You can call us and leave a message at 415-685-GEEK. That's 415-685-4335. And we will play those messages on the air. So uh, please call. Leave us a message. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash fpgeeks at facebook.com slash face, uh, fpgeeks. Uh, we have the website fpgeeks.com, the forum fpgeeks.com slash forum. And we also have a mailing address where you can send us letters, rants, raves, or artwork at Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 728, Ankeny, Iowa 50021. We'll see you next week, everyone. Hey, guys. And thanks. I think, actually, right I think it's uh, someone is turning 40, isn't he? Uh, who would that be? Who? I, I know no it's not idea. my birthday. Uh, Steven, I, have, birthday? I have no idea, but uh, I just uh, I got birthday. the strong feeling. When is my birthday? It's coming up. Nah, <laughs> you, there's still plenty of time. Not till what? I think it'll be two weeks. I'll be 38. Right, yeah. Is that true? <laughs> Hang on. What sound effect can I throw in for that? <laughs> Boo! <laughs> yeah, I'll be 40 on October the 15th. Well, so. happy birthday, Mr. Yeah. Gray. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate thanks. it. You guys got any big plans lined up? I have no, I, no, not Well, you know what? Actually, I am going to be taking a vacation um, the, the week after my birthday. My dad, my brother, and I, my dad has a big like 36 foot motorhome and uh, every year we do a guy's vacation so after my birthday I'm gonna jump in the motorhome with my dad and my brother and uh, just have a good time so very cool yep sounds good yeah. all right everyone we'll hey see guys you. thanks thanks again for having me on it's always a pleasure when you invite me um, of course I was joking but if you can get your frequency of Brian to be at least like once every two weeks that's gonna be great <laughs> okay I just have a good one guys thank you yeah, very much we'll see you everyone all right, bye -bye. see ya. Bye-bye. And we should be off there.